with Mike Kelly Adventures back for our next episode of the Texas Travel Series. Now we're here in Georgetown, Texas and just five minutes in I happen to run into someone kind of special. Well howdy! How's it going? I'm Chet. I live here and we love welcoming visitors to our beautiful town. Yeah well I figure you'd be the best one to share what we should look forward to. Oh man well y'all found one of my favorite places Blue Hole right behind me on the San Gabriel River. I mean, uh, have you gone to the square yet? No, I haven't. Just got here. Okay. All right. So you got to stop by the square and just do anything and everything that presents itself. That's the beauty of the square is the serendipity. So have some ice cream, have a burger, go have a cold beverage, and just kind of see what trouble you get into, truthfully. I can't wait. Thank yeah. you so much. Well, we definitely started our trip here in Georgetown on the right note here at Blue Hole. The water here is just a gorgeous color and I love the water spilling over. It felt like a little bit of a waterfall. But at the most beautiful downtown square in Texas, Georgetown clearly represents its name. As soon as you walk in, all the buildings are so gorgeous and it's fun to spend an evening strolling around, checking out the shops, drinking wine and seeing everything that they have. starting the tasting with the Viognier. Now usually I am a red wine drinker, but as I was told, Viogniers are actually a red wine drinker's favorite white, which makes sense because Texas makes really great Viogniers. This is the chocolate raspberry. So you want to take a drink of the wine, a bite of chocolate, a drink of the wine. It's so fun that you can walk around and try different wineries here at Georgetown Winery. I love that they had different sweet wines. So there was like apple strudel, blueberry, funky monkey, and a lot of other fun flavors. And we're ending our wine tour here at Barron's Creek where we are sitting on the patio, enjoying a glass of wine, and just seeing the beautiful town square. Blue Corn Harvest Grill is really just such a unique restaurant. They have a lot of fun fusions. For instance, they have the Texas Tinga nachos, which I guess you could classify as a Tex Indomex and flash fried oysters, and just so many different great items that are on the menu. We checked into the Sheraton and we're enjoying the beautiful pool that's heated, going and seeing the beautiful view from our room, and just being able to rest and relax here. The Sheraton has free bikes that you can rent out and miles of trails right behind the hotel. We're here on San Gabriel Trail where you can bike and there's just such a beautiful view. We've got the river right next to us. There's birds all around and beautiful flowers. There's two different kinds of jams. There's a peach and thyme jam. And then that's a black fig jam. These are just some water crackers that we do. This is a, the green one is a sage derby. And then the brown one is a porter. Bricks and Ale is a really fun restaurant that incorporates a lot of local produce and is the perfect spot for brunch. One of my favorites was the cinnamon roll waffles. And if you're vegan, they really make sure to create some unique dishes that are plant-based as well.
On the downtown square, they have Mikey V's Hot Sauce Shop, and they have more hot sauces than you think you needed, but there's so many different flavors I hadn't even thought about. Plus, it is veteran owned, and they even make their own style of flavors, as well as some that they bring in. But it's called Doomed. It's made by Hellfire Hot Sauce up in Wisconsin. It has 6.66 million Scoville chili extract added to the sauce, which is already ridiculously hot. Uh, they're claiming it's the hottest sauce on the market at the moment. That's actually like a sauce and not just a straight extract. And then we also got these into the Mad Dog Plutonium. This one's 9 million Scoville chili extract. So that's something you put like a toothpick in, add it to a stew or a chili, and most people still aren't gonna be able to eat it. Another stop on the square is Ken's Guitars. It's just a really cool shop to walk inside. Lots of really amazing guitars. An instrument that I saw called a dulcimer. Definitely something different. But they also have guitar lessons, music lessons, and on Fridays they have performances. Right next door they have the cutest toy shop and in the back they have an ice cream shop where they have all you can eat ice cream. One thing I love about small towns is that when you visit antique shops, you really can find some great gems. So I have to check them out when I'm in a town. I just love all the nature here in Georgetown. We're here at Lake Georgetown. There's some great paths to walk, the water, and in the spring it is covered in wildflowers which are absolutely gorgeous. Twenty Twenty Market Scratch Grill is another great place that really focuses on sourcing local food in their menu and it is apparent as soon as you take a bite. The quality of the steak put this easily on my list of top steaks and I don't take that lightly. Plus they have some really fun burgers. We're starting our morning off at Sweet Lemon Kitchen, the cutest little bakery inside a house. They serve up breakfast sandwiches, coffee, and a mouth-watering French berry bake. And we're ending our trip here in Georgetown at the Inner Space Caverns where we're going to go underground and explore. Now the Reverend, he bought the mineral rights for the area, which means he essentially bought the cave. And when he bought the cave, he wanted to open it up for public tours, but he thought not a lot of people are going to want to come down into Long Walk Caverns. He wanted a trendier name. He thought of that space race that was going on. He figures if everybody can be so interested in what's up in outer space, he can get them interested in what's below, in inner space. That's how we got the name, in case you ever wondered. 
not because of the spoon doesn't change. This is the only stone in the entire cave that you can touch. That's why we call it Temptation Stone. It's a real formation. We sacrifice it on purpose so you can see what happens to the cave when it's killed. And yes, this right here, very much dead. We do have oil on our hands. So when we touch the rock, oil on our hands is gonna stick to it and create a shield. Oil and water don't mix, they separate. So that means when you get the water with the calcite, it's not gonna be able to leave the calcite behind on top of that oil barrier. Instead, it just rolls right off. You can fast forward any amount of time. It doesn't matter. This will never, ever, ever grow again. So if you have any of those temptations or any of those urges, get them out of your system because you can't touch anything else past that guy right there. Another cool thing about this room is right above our head. This right here is all fossilized coral reef. So 200 million years ago, Texas was underneath the ocean and this was the floor of it. That is a fully grown adult chicken nugget. Also, if any of you guys have been getting drops of water on your head, those are called cave kisses. Those are worth seven years good luck for each one. That's your gap, so rack them up. Active tectonic plates shift, they cause friction, that causes an earthquake and the earth splits open. Just a crack, but enough for water to start coming down in here. Now, as the water came in, it actually weathered away the rocks. It made that EDB crack bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until we got these big pockets and voids we can stand in. Now, that means that at one point, the cave was an aquifer, natural well of water. But over the years, the water drained down into the ground 200 feet below us and created the Edwards Aquifer, which is what we use today for drinking water. Now, once all the water was out of here, it started coming down from the ceiling, making all of our formations. And we have almost five miles of explored cave passageways. It all started from that little crack right there 20 million years ago. If it wasn't for that, it wouldn't be down here today. So, thank you. <laughs> Any dinosaur. But we did have uh, Columbia mammoths, saber-toothed cats, peccaries, things like that. And a lot of those animals, they had very bad eyesight. I can relate. Now, this right here, the other name is the Imagination Station. That's because we're down here alone in a cave, just you and rocks for hours on end, you start to see shapes in the rocks. Like a mermaid riding a dolphin. Telescope my lens, bring it to the rock, I'll blow your mind. And that's all for our trip to Georgetown. Make sure to follow along at My Curly Adventures for more Texas adventures.